We're now going to zoom in on two particular examples that go forward, different kinds of numbers, okay? And they're ones you've looked at before. Okay. More depth. Let's think of negatives first. Okay. Negatives. Again, I want you to think. What kind of problem would be solved that would need negative numbers, right? Well, okay. What's 4 minus 3? One. It's 1, right? What's 3 minus 4? Now, you guys say negative 1, right? You should say negative 1, not minus 1, by the way. That's, that's, that's another story. But you know what? You know all those super crazy smart people from the Renaissance, right? All like the, the Raphaels and the Michelangelos and the Da Vinci's, right? They would have said, this is, this is, you know what they'd say? They'd say, no solution. You know, in exactly the same way as when you get a quadratic, right? Something like this, x squared uh, minus x plus 1, okay? You'd look at that and you'd throw it into the quadratic formula and you'd say, ah, doesn't have a solution, right? But you guys know there is a solution, just not in terms of the numbers that we looked at. That's what they said here. They're like, you can't, you can't have three things. You can't have three things. You can't have three things and take away four. It doesn't work in real life. You take one away, and then two away, and then three, and you can't take away any more whiteboard markers, right? But you guys know better, don't you? You guys know better. So, so this was the kind of problem that negatives were designed to solve, okay? They're weird, because how can you have less than, you know, one, two, three, less than nothing? Nothing itself was a weird enough idea, okay? Now, next row, this is a new one, right? How long did it take for this idea to be accepted, right? Now, it's a bit tricky because depending on what part of the world you're in, they were accepted at different times. But, are you ready? See this quote, the quote we, looked, we started at the beginning of the lesson, right? It was spoken, written rather, in 1759 about negative numbers. They said, psh, these negative things, right? It's obvious there's no solution to this. It's obvious and simple. And now you're making this dark and confusing. And there's this, huh? Like, what does that mean, right? So the negative numbers were considered absurd, at least classically speaking, until the 1700s, okay? So what does a negative mean? How would you explain it to someone? Uh, I think the idea is, like, what's the difference between 1 or minus 1, 2, and negative 2? Right? Like when you first learnt negatives, what did they tell you the negatives signified? Hmm. What situations do we use them in? Uh, it's like, look, you've got, um, you've got the sea, water level, right? And then you've got underneath the sea, there is, you know, a submarine. Okay? And then up here, you've got, you've got a plane, right? There we go. It's, it's beautiful, okay? Looks like a space shuttle, actually. Anyway, okay? So, you got a plane, right? It's above. And then you've got a submarine, and it's below, right? So you can call the sea level, you can call that zero. That would make this positive, and that would make this negative, right? Or you could talk about, like, debt. Like, I've got money, or I owe money, right? So the intuitive meaning is that these things, they're opposites, right? That's the intuitive meaning that we get from negatives. Up, down, left, right. Have money, owe money, okay? So, this might seem simple, but how do negatives work when you multiply them? This is really important for the next bit that we're gonna do, okay? You start with one, right? If you multiply it by a negative, then you'll get to minus one. Now what happens when you multiply again? You, it comes back to one, doesn't it? And if you multiply again, and again, and again. And this is how it cycles around, okay? So, have that and that. And when you think about like a coordinate system, right? Okay. What it means to have your positives one, two, three, here, right? And your negatives over here, right? The meaning is, well, instead of going forwards, go backwards. That's what negatives mean in a coordinate system. Alright, now here's where it starts to get really fun, right? And this is our last bit that we're going to finish up. Um, complex numbers. Complex numbers. We, we've sort of very, very, um, in a very basic way, looked at these, okay? 
Let's go through the same kinds of ideas. Why were these numbers invented? What problem was I trying to solve? I've actually got one on the board. Look, we talked about how simple quadratics are, right? It's not hard to write something like that down. And yet, you need to have these numbers to exist to say, oh, it has a solution, right? And I can solve it. Why is it weird? Because what number can you think of that you multiply by itself and gives you a negative? We don't have numbers like that, right? That's, that's really weird. What's the next thing? Um, <laughs> how long have these numbers been considered absurd? Uh, well, based on how you guys reacted when I first explained the idea, in some places they're still considered absurd. Like, still don't get it. It's still weird. Okay. Okay, now. I said negatives are about flipping back and forth, about opposites, right? But complex numbers are not. Remember I? Okay. Let's do this multiplication cycle and I'll show you, okay? This is what happens when you multiply by negative numbers. What happens if I multiply 1 by I? Simple question. You just get I, right? What happens when you multiply again? You get, what do you get? You get i squared. What's i squared, though? It's negative 1, isn't it? That's how we defined it. Oh. Square root of negative 1, yeah? Okay, what happens when I multiply by it one more time? Times i, multiply by i, should be minus i, right? Okay, last time, I promise. I want to multiply by i again. What happens? Minus i. It'll be minus i squared, which is... Minus negative 1, which is 1. Okay. So here, it takes me two, like one, one multiplication really, to get back to the original, right? 1, 2. 1, 2. Okay. But here it took me more. It took me 1, 2, 3, 4. Right? So the idea is, instead of opposites and instead of flipping, right, the intuitive meaning is rotation. Okay? Here's 1. Do you remember this? I showed you very briefly. If I multiply by i once, you get to here. You multiply again, you get to here. You multiply a third time, look, that's i up there. So that's why this is minus i, because you're going down. And then you multiply the fourth time, and that gets you back to where you started. Okay, so it's rotation. 